So a while back, I did a soil blocking video. In that video, I showed you how to make those soil blocks. And I hinted towards the fact that I'm doing different versions of medium for said soil blocks to really truly see what gives us the best results. So today we're gonna look at what potting soil mix yielded the best results and why. So first off, I want to show you one of the very few actually germinated versions of a vermicast, straight vermicast, my vermicast, by the way, so no pesticides, no nothing in there. It's just this is the damage that a full-blown nutrient-rich medium can do to a poor little seedling. So this, like I said, I'll show footage of the entire block system, but there's very few that actually germinated. This is one here, and that is the only one we have. Very, very tiny compared to the next one I'm gonna show you. But why, why did this happen? So when we're looking at using straight compost, straight vermicast, um, straight manures, I was actually talking to a friend, Arcopia, um, Jessica from Arcopia. She does cut flower farming on um, and sells seedlings all the time. So I was telling her I was doing this experiment and she said, well, aren't, you're not supposed to plant into direct nutrient rich compost or vermicast. It can really reduce your yields or your, in this case, germination rates. And it does, it does do that. Now, the reason for this is because inside of any sort of plant material, decomposed or otherwise, there are chemicals that are released in the process. And these chemicals are meant for a survival situation in nature. So when a plant begins to decompose, its main goal is to ensure that its offspring, its seeds, will germinate the next year. The best way to give those seeds the best rates of germination and ultimately overpowering all those surrounding plants is through actually suppressing the germination of various other seedlings cell or seeds. We could end up with a certain variety that does not like tomato seedlings that then suppresses germination, just overall growth of that plant. So this is an example of why we do not use straight vermicast, straight compost, straight manure, straight nothing. We always try to mix something in. So the next question is, what ratio of mixture is best? This is gonna blow up some of your guys' minds. So next up, slightly bigger. I know, you're probably thinking, Ashley, that's not big. It is actually bigger, and I got more germination out of this as well. So this mix is a 50-50. I have 50% coconut coir, and I have 50% compost. So I did do a bioassays test on said compost before I used it. If you don't know what a bioassays test is, I suggest you go check out my video. Very important step whenever using any form of compost, whether it's your own compost and or uh, a purchased compost. Important for your money in your pocket and just your overall sanity in the spring. So you don't wanna run into issues. So I did do a bioassays test, showed up good, broadly germinated just fine. So this is the germination rates I got of this. I think personally that a 50-50 mix is too high in nutrients, particularly for even a heavy feeder like a tomato, same variety, all of these, but too high of a nutrient mix. Again, potentially running into some suppression of growth caused by said plant chemicals being released, alleopathic chemicals. So 50-50, not great results personally. Next up, we have same compost, same potting soil. However, this time we have only 25% compost, remainder being coconut coir. So I planted two seeds in every single one of these cells. And as you can see, those first two cells, I got one germination out of both. When I cut back to only 25% compost, I ended up getting both to germinate. Still, Pretty good results. By all means, these are strong plants. They're going to make it into the garden, into the greenhouse just fine. I've got some good algae growth, which by the way, is not a bad thing. Don't ever scrape off your algae, leave it in place. You want that to go in your garden. Healthy soil, outdoors, 5% by weight being algae. A plus plus. So this is healthy by all means. I think these are doing great. Having a little bit of a lighting issue at the moment, but other than that, doing just fine. This. I approve of, I think, no reason why you can do a 25, 75%. The true test here is going to be in a few weeks, a month from now, two months from now, when these guys have that extra added nutrients and how much they take off compared to the straight potting soil version I'm about to show you. Drum roll, please. <laughs> we have both germinated, both drastically taller, 
I guess some could claim leg year, but that's just a natural growth pattern. Massive cotyledons, meaning germination went just hunky dory. And we're already on how many sets of true leaves? Two sets of true leaves compared to one set of true leaves. And this, my friends, is potting soil. So this is a seed starting potting soil. It has very little to no added nutrients, maybe some perlite. Quite honestly, I don't use much perlite in mine. You can't really see inside of this block any sort of perlite. It's because there isn't much perlite in my, in my blocking systems. I like zero to no air inside of my seed starting. So this very clearly gave very little to no suppression of the seedling and ultimately gave us some of the best results. My go-to has always been potting soil, a seed starting potting soil mix with very little to no added nutrients for this initial stage. Keep in mind, this initial stage is fleeting. These are getting transplanted up or bumped up in the next week. And I'm gonna show you how to do that using mycorrhizal fungi in a dry application form. But these are getting potted up next week. They're not going to be in these seed blocks much longer whatsoever, but you can see really, really great results from this just because I don't have that suppression of that organic material. When I go to bump up, however, I am going to add my compost. I'm going to add my vermicast in this case because that's my stuff and I trust that stuff the most. But regardless, I'm going to add that into the mix for the bumping up. This seed germination process, it needs to be bare minimum. Don't get too fancy, don't get too wild. Just buy a regular potting soil. If you want to DIY your own, go for very little to minimal perlite a little bit of lime to adjust that pH out and then just a coconut coir or a and a peat, you will very quickly realize there'll be very little to no fungus growth and you will also see really great results when it comes to germination and just overall plant health. So I hope this was proof that I'm not lying when I say just use a plain potting soil for this initial stage and add in all the fluff you'll want once everyone's germinated and trucking along. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.